Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Insomnia True Silver Championship Second Edition. My name is Sotl, joined here by Raven and Noxious. We have narrowed down an incredible pool of 103 players all the way down to the final four. We have the first semi final for you guys right now, which is SK's Powder versus Liquid's Dog. How are you guys feeling about this matchup and the, the state of the day so far? You can see the whole bracket in front of you right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm look, really looking forward to this matchup. I've uh, pegged Powder as my winner of this tournament once we uh, found out who the top eight were. And, uh, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to it. Dog, uh, one of the, well, the only American left in the tournament as well as he uh, knocked out delay in the first round of the top eight. But overall, just a, a brilliant top eight, a nice spread of some crazy decks as well. Not, not too standard that we've seen and just really good games overall. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that one of these four guys will be happy for their big win. Um, uh, just from the lineups that we've got in the top four, none of them really has a crazy title to their name yet. Yeah, I think Dog probably has the most storied tournament history right. overall, but yeah, still not one of those guys that you associate with really taking major title after major title. And for Powder particularly, he is the uh, the real European guy that makes it all the way to those top eights, top fours, incredible consistency overall, yeah. but doesn't get that big major win under his belt. Um, if you're a, a North American viewer watching this, just think Chucky, but European. That's basically the equivalent. It's basically Powder. Yeah. Do you, what, <laughs> Raven, you say that he... He was your pick to take it here. What 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 makes you think he's going to go all the way this time? Yeah, I mean, I think it is just uh, that consistency, to be honest. I mean, I've, I've watched him play even this year. He's already had really good results. And uh, just uh, always placing, like, at least, like, top eight, but then a lot of top fours, a lot of second place finishes. You know, at some point, it's going to happen, right? And I think uh, he's been feeling pretty good all weekend and very relaxed as well. And I think that actually helps. When, when Powder's maybe feeling a bit too tired or a bit stressed out, it does affect him quite a lot in the match. But all weekend, he's just been like, yeah, I'm just going to go and play. I'm pretty happy with everything. And I think that's really helped him. We can see that in his play this weekend. All right, in case you guys missed the videos either, we do have a chance for you guys to get to know Dog and Powder a little bit better. We, catched, we caught up with them earlier to get their thoughts on the tournament so far. To be through to the final eight, it's always fantastic. It's always a nice feeling when you win, so I'm really happy and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. When preparing for a tournament like this, you kind of have to prepare for the Swiss more, more than like the really good players. So when I prepared for this, I expected a lot of Zoo, a lot of Druid, uh, so I kind of prepared for that. What motivates most is probably just to get my first win. I've been in the semis and the finals a lot, but I've never found that one win, so I hope this is my tournament, but it always feels like that when you're winning and then eventually you do lose, but eventually I'm hoping it's going to be my tournament, so maybe this one. Getting through the top eight feels pretty good, pretty good. The level of competition was pretty crazy. I mean, there were tons of big names here. You didn't have to just beat the big name once. You had to like beat a big name and then you're like, oh my goodness, I hope I don't play against another big name. But of course you have to if you win because, you know, Swiss, if you're like 2-0, you play another 2-0 and most of the pros are, you know, getting good wins. So yeah, it was pretty stacked and really hard to get past Swiss. So I used to kind of get nervous or feel pressure coming to events, but I've been to so many at this point, it doesn't really phase me. I mean, I'm uh, pretty logical, I guess, and kind of just use that for my advantage. Other than that, I don't really ever get tilted, so it's good. As you mentioned, Noxious, two players still really looking to crush a big tournament, get down that bit, that big paycheck, those HCT points, but most importantly, just the prestige of being a major tournament winner. Powder going into depth there about his, his status as the, as the nearly man. Dog as well saying he's gained more experience in tournaments time after time. So it'll be interesting to see what goes on here. But the lineups come up here, and the thing that stands out to me in these lineups we were talking earlier, just as we were watching the game in the crowd there, there's been something like 10 different Warlock decks that we've seen in right, this tournament yeah. on stream. Neither of these players has a Warlock in their arsenal. So um, what do you make of these lineups overall? Yeah, I think it's yeah, really interesting. I think like Powder seems a, a lot more, say, standard lineup. As we can see there, the, the Druid and the Warrior. We've seen a lot of Druid and Warrior this weekend, and it's been performing really well. Uh, but Dogs is just crazy. It's just Mage, Warrior, and Rogue. So right. not really a lineup you'd expect, but you know, it's not a surprise, especially from the Rogue. 
from Dog that he's making it work, and we've seen Rogue perform really well so far this tournament. Yeah, his list is a little bit weird because it's kind of hybridizing between the typical oil play and the Miracle Malagos. So he's got enough tempo that he can win off of simply getting the board, but also get to that late game combo against Control. And the Tempo Mage, I believe, is the only one we've really seen at work that did anything relevant uh, in the matches. So it's kind of nice to see that, being that there's so many Druids. Uh, and for some reason, Secret Paladin's kind of absent from this top four. It's kind of not doing any work. Yeah, I think there's been a trend recently in tournaments where Secret Paladin has more and more often just been forced out of tournaments yeah. by people bringing, um, bringing lineups that defeated it. And quite a few times in Conquest tournaments recently, we've seen the situation with, okay, I'm 2-0 up. I just need to get one win with my Secret Paladin. And it just hasn't been able to happen. They've just got reverse swept against the Secret Paladin. So the reaction to that is Paladin not being as big an impact in this tournament. We're seeing more stuff like the Rogues, the Patron Warriors, etc. But as you guys mentioned, Dog's lineup, a little bit off the wall. We have the yeah. Mage, that's the Tempo Mage. It's not yeah. even the Freeze Mage, which is kind of the tournament staple, but also Control Warrior, not the more common patron that we've been seeing in this in this tournament. Raven, if you were going to bring a Warrior deck to a tournament, which way would you be leaning right now? It's a really difficult one. So I, I personally would lean towards patron purely because the, the Control Warrior deck is something that suddenly sort of exploded again and a lot of people are playing it. But then I would expect people to know that and maybe, you know, think about that when building the lineup. Whereas I feel like Patron just, even though people can expect it and have played against it a lot, the deck's just so strong when, right. it, you know, you can you can uh, control your card draw quite well. And the second you start putting those Patrons on the board, it's always difficult for your opponent to deal with. So I think for me, it's just a more consistent deck overall and maybe less expected for this tournament specifically. Right. Well, players are getting ready. Looks like uh, they're starting. The cap is adjusted for powder. <laughs> ready. Just the tip of through. the hat before the game. Maximum yeah. comfort is always important. But speaking of powder, he has the more um, standard class lineup, let's say, in this right. tournament. But we've seen what we've been referring to as the SK builds of various decks <laughs> over, the, over this tournament. Yeah. The, the the Shaman with the Gilblin Stalker and the Piloted Shredder, and also the really unique Druid list that the guys have been bringing to this tournament. Yeah. I want to see more of it, honestly. I feel like we haven't seen enough of that Druid. We've seen enough Druid, but not enough of that one. <laughs> so, like, the, the unique twists on it, I feel, are uh, yeah, and still to be... It, and you know stupid. what? It's a testament to SK as well, is that, like, especially, you know, messing with Aggro Shaman, fine, you know, you could, there's a few spots you can just change in out. Messing with Midrange Druid just right. seems nuts. Yeah. It, the deck's so good, and he's been proven time and time again. Powder's just gone, you know what? I'm taking this Druid we've all worked on to top eight in this tournament that's for a big prize pull and a lot of HGT points. So fair enough to him, you know, all props all his way. Yeah. Taking a bit of a crazy deck and making it work. Wow. Yeah, the, the extent of experimenting with Druid is really like flex a Living Roots and Adonis Assassin. <laughs> yeah, run, like maybe you play an Ancient of War or a Sylvanas. Yeah. Other than that, 28 core Druid cards go. But yeah, 15 Druid of is... which, like 16 of which are basic. So <laughs> right, yeah, it yeah. doesn't help at all. But Druid is not a part of this matchup. So let's not give it any more airtime than it needs. Decent start here from Powder with the uh, coin two drop into two drop here as the aggro shaman. Doomhammer already locked and loaded, ready to go. Yeah, and also speaking of this matchup, I really feel like Powder's probably feeling happy about the way this uh, initial selection's gone. Um, the aggro shaman, a lot of the time, anything that's hyper aggressive versus rogue is normally just favorite because rogue needs the perfect opening to slow a deck like this down. And at the moment, he's definitely not got that. Prep's always nice to have. Uh, you know, the shift's okay, but there are no one health minions on the board, so he's going to use that to just cycle now. But a lot of the time, anything this aggressive just runs away against Rogue and just kills it too fast. Yeah. The, the only issue here is that, you know, Powder, by playing the second two drop, may not be able to squeeze the Flame Tongue Totem damage that he might have wanted to, but by doing so, also pros for Deadly Poison. Is there a poison? If there's no poison, then there's no Deadly, there's no Flurry. If there's no Flurry, then I can play Feral Spirit before turn four, where otherwise I would overload my Doom Hammer. So this play from Powder, just going for the, uh, the scouting, from the Deadly Poison is really solid. Right, and this actually works out the curve perfectly as well, because with overloading two crystals here, he can then jam Flame Tongue Totem to push a bunch of damage the turn afterwards, after establishing, as you correctly pointed out, that there probably isn't a Blade Flurry coming, and then that unlocks the overload perfectly for turn five. Exactly, because, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I initially glanced at Flame Tongue, Abusive Sergeant, smock, you know, like, yeah. go <laughs> to face. Sounds like there. it makes sense. But, but then when you try and uh, play the game well and think more than just one turn, at a time, you know, it does build strength that Doom Hammer, exactly as you guys just said. So, Wait, a really strong player. People play this game more than one turn at a time. I, it shocked me too. Whoa, me too. those freeze majors. I'm still playing this game one <laughs> turn at a time. <laughs> 
Well, this is a bit, uh, a bit clunky, because on one end, you just want to put damage in the rogue. I mean, look at that. There's eight damage guaranteed on the board. Flame Tongue would add an extra four. You've got the Doom Hammer on the follow-up. So unless your board gets cleaned up in the meantime, um, you'll probably just be able to win off of that Doom Hammer. Yeah, this is a bit of a tough choice as well, because he could use the Rock Biter to very cleanly kill the Violet Teacher, but with the Doom Hammer in hand, it just presents so much damage uh, from the Doom Hammer later on that it's uh, probably not going to go down like that, and he's just going to use the Flame Tongue, and he he is going to leave the Violet Teacher. Yeah, it's, it's, he's just it's, pushing so much damage. Right. Yeah. Is there any world with this hand where you're pushing, what, 12 damage this oh. turn that you're you're forced to respect a Violet Teacher? I'm not sure that you need to. I mean, if he doesn't win next turn, the heal bot can stall. Uh, and with this Drake, with spell damage. He's going to push four more minimum with the Doomhammer on the following turn, though, right? And then even if the heal bot comes down, that's only healing to 11. And he has Rock Bio. And he has Rock Bio. So it's, I don't think the heal bot is even a big deal. I think he's going to need to maybe chain heal bots if there's two in the deck, and maybe that might not even be enough. So. Shadow Step! No, I mean, I just, <laughs> wish, <laughs> I, I just wish that, uh, you know, Dog it, were playing, in this case, two heal bots. I know he's playing one Belcher, one heal bot, possibly okay. two Belchers. Uh, there was a variant a while back that was attempting to, you know, slot in two more defensive guards, but it was difficult. So yeah, so so with this turn that's coming up now, I I, I imagine Powder's going to just equip Doomhammer, but we'll have to see. If the Doomhammer's equipped, does Dog actually go for the Belcher? I mean, I do like the uh, abusive on Flame Tongue to go face. The only issue is because if the Belcher comes out, then Doomhammer can at least handle it if you've got Rockbiter and you still have leftover mana. But it lets you play that Finley, right, on the same turn to get maybe a Hunter Hero Power uh, to reach in without spells. So. Yeah, with the, with the line here, though, he's still going to have four mana next turn, so he can play Rockbiter plus Finley, and okay. then as long as the Finley source gives him one damage, then that's going to be lethal with the Activator. And this so. turn, he will need the Finley. He didn't draw, you know, Lightning Ball or, you know, any form of other yeah. burst, which is and, really crazy, actually. And so it might have been a counter lethal oh. with a board like so this. This is really important. Oh, Mage Hunter fixed it up. We'll do the job. Druid gets it done. Wind Fury effect, so that Druid Hero Power adds two damage, Rock Biter adds the six more, and that is going to take down game one very, very quickly. Turn six lethal for Powder with the Aggro Shaman. That is what this deck is built to uh, do. I was just about to say the same. If you had to just like describe how this matchup should go in like just a, a, you know, an even world there, like, this is what happens. The Shaman does just normally steamroll over the road. Yeah, without a heal bot, it would have been even more certain of a death, but uh, it was stall a tiny bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the interesting thing there is you brought up the, the idea of does he play Sludge Belcher there, yeah. which normally I would suggest, no, that's probably nonsense because he was at three health, right? So every single burn spell in the deck kills him. But when you actually start to break down this new evolution of the Aggro Shaman list, um, you know, Lava Shock is a card that's cut, so that there's less burn spells in the deck. It's more minion focused. Yeah. So maybe Sludge Belcher was actually a better protect protective option there overall. It's something that people will have to consider as time goes and, on. And here a really, but deck. a really difficult call as well, because if you Belcher, oh, sure. Lightning Bolt kills you. Right. But, but if Crackle, you, but, Burst, anything. Yeah, 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 exactly. Also, if you Belch it, you almost, without a, an Earth Shock, for example, you almost just lock out the Doom Hammer. Yeah. Because there were no minions on board, unless it's a charge minion. And then, you know, you have to think about so many things that there, there was definitely like you said, it's something you have to think about, not a misplay or, you know, Yeah, absolutely. Like it's definitely a, an option the dog could have considered, and it's something I've talked about a lot this weekend. Like, sure, it's a, a play that may have won him that game in particular, but, yeah, but is it, it correct yeah, on exactly, average? Exactly, yeah. Well, just to note as well, Powder is not 2-0, two two zero, zero, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Put, just, uh, no, 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 just put it out there. No, no one told you guys Ag <laughs> Agro Shaman wins count double win this game. Oh, that's <laughs> right. I get it. Did they you not hear how Ignite style. was going 11 you, you, oh, yeah. you didn't think was he actually won set? 11 games of Hearthstone, right? Oh, I just thought he hit him so hard with that Doomhammer, it crushed the second <laughs> class as well. <laughs> just breaks the second hero through. There, there we, we go. go. One game to zero to Powder. So Dog is going to bring out the extreme removal, extreme life gain based control warrior here just to try and simply outlast the damage but totem golem is pretty much the best opening yeah i was gonna say this card is so good versus warrior just no easy way to deal with it this early in the game <laughs> just gonna take nine from it <laughs> sure oh no he's gonna follow up with, with revenge right uh is he i imagine so i mean Other unless you want to play that. the acolyte right all right sure uh, well, the, the most important thing in this matchup is really to make sure that you maximize your uh, your health conservation, because there's a point where the Shaman simply can't win. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and especially with the 2-3 being presented to you here, right? It's too tempting. What's crazy about now is though that like, Powder already has Doomhammer, and in this matchup, Doomhammer is insanely uh, powerful. Is it? That is what can push you the extra damage through all that armor gain, and especially if he combines it with a Rock Bio. It's just damage that the Warrior cannot play around. Unless there is a Harrison Jones from That's Dog, true. which I've seen a lot of Control Warriors this weekend. I think most of them have <laughs> and been I've playing seen Harrison. Some Harrison Jones. Yeah, at some I point. can't quite put it together. Yeah, we've cast a lot of right games now. this weekend. It's, it's very true, but it's yeah. It's been everywhere, though. We've seen uh, we've seen a rogue list with Harrison Jones. We've yep. seen uh, some, Druid, some right? yeah, Druid with Harrison Jones. Handlock with double ooze. Double ooze, yeah. 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 Like, well, what is a weapon and how do I get rid of it? Yep. So this is uh, kind of the issue with some slightly more situational cards like Flame Tongue Totem in your deck. When you just don't have the minions on the board to use them, it becomes a little bit awkward. But honestly, Powder was just spending his turn there doing something that didn't overload him because we know how this game develops from here, Raven. So the Doom Hammer is tempting, um, but would you not maybe consider playing the Flame Tongue and the Leper Gnome since you're never going to get another chance to really do so? Or even the Lightning Bolt, who knows? I just feel like you're never going to get Flame Tongue value as long as this warrior has a say in it. Yeah, Shona actually makes a lot of sense. He's even going to hold back on the Leper Gnome so it doesn't get caught in the residual uh, Death Spite damage. Use it uh, to potentially do more damage than the two that it's going to get here over the course of the game. But uh, Dog is going to go ahead, generate double Acolyte onto the board here, sweep through his deck, pick up some more options. Yeah, what's pretty funny about this, though, is the AoE on the other two totems, the heal totem's just going to heal it back up to two again. So uh, that's actually something to consider, considering the other totem is spell power in uh, Aggro Shaman. So that's going to get some work done, potentially, in the next couple of turns. Oh, pretty scary card here that's been uh, found. If Dog knew what was in Powder's hand, number one, the Belcher does not save him. The Doom Hammer is ready to go. Spell damage is on the board. It's pretty tough for Powder uh, not to find at least another 15 damage. It's just that Dog is going to have to slow it down. Yeah, the, yeah. the Earth Shock's huge here as well because we can see that there's a Belcher coming from Dog at some point to sort of that's the natural response to a Doom Hammer, and it's just like one mana well, Earth Shock. Ignore. How much does Powder think he needs to Earth Shock an Acolyte? Probably not too much, but it does conserve the totem, right? Being that it will heal up to two, and only one Acolyte will not be sufficient to take yeah, care I, of. I think, I think on, with the Warrior on this health, although, you know, we talk about card draw for Control Warrior is super important, but also, he still only has X amount of mana, wow. right? You know, he only has six mana, so if he draws another 10 cards, well, he can still only use six mana's worth of cards. Insane! He Finley and get that Druid hero power. Though. Unbelievable. So for Doomhammer afterwards, that's gonna feel pretty good. Yeah, and this Earthshock has been conserved, so he recognized that, obviously, you don't want to be using that Earthshock, as you said, as removal, because uh, card draw is not really the biggest worry that you've yeah, got Yeah, not on turn point. six, right? right. Yeah, so that's an interesting line from him that turn. I guess, like, he wanted to play the Finley onto the board, which, you know, kind of makes him feel like needing the Earth Shock to get rid of these Acolytes, but the Taunt Totem there was huge yeah, yeah. because that walls out the Acolytes. And now, you know, Dog has these two brawls in his hand, which um, aren't going to get too much work done here, but it's not the highest value brawl on the board either, especially when he has a couple of minions on his own. Uh, Raven, what do, you, what do you like here? Yeah, this is really tough because when the, just to go on what you said, that when oh. those two minions are Acolytes... Right. They just die and don't draw, you yep. know, from Brawl. So you don't, you can't really guarantee a card draw here. I don't know if actually going with um, either just slamming the Belcher or even the Shield Maiden maybe, just put a big body on the board, gain the instant armor. Um, I think that's just the best option. It doesn't feel great, but brawling this is just too much of a yeah. commitment. I like brawling like almost no damage, uh, and that's your whole turn. You can't even armor up in Brawl. I really like Shield Maiden because it lets you weave in an extra hero power on turn seven with the Belcher. Um, and you do keep a 5-5 you know, five, five to contest the board a little bit. Yeah. Right, I think Dog's thinking here is, you know, Shield Maiden will always gain him the 5 whenever he plays right. it, whereas right now the Sludge Belcher has the opportunity to get a lot of work done. Um, unfortunately, the Earth Shock is there. I don't think Dog had any real way to get that read based on yeah. Powder's hand. So uh, this is going to go through. And Powder has delayed playing the Doom Hammer for a number of turns here, and he's even considering it now. So I guess he has the knowledge, based on what we're seeing here, that there is a Harrison Jones in this deck, and he's considering the various implications. Yeah, but what's really interesting as well is that Powder's line of plays throughout this whole game, when I honestly would have felt like I would have just snapped Doom Hammer on five, probably. Um, but he's really favoring minions. He's just, I've got minions. I'm gonna play them and then just carry on like that. Maybe he feels that Brawl was a, wasn't a card in the hand and he would have saw it the previous turn, but, but you know, this is this is really crazy. He's just going for the lightning bolt, the four damage, cashing in that spell power totem that's still on the board. 
But I, I don't know. I just imagine if Doom Hammer was equipped, like, do, are the minions making that much of an impact? I think what the turn? the Flame Tongue totem was the decider of that uh, of that call, right? The fact that he had totems that he would otherwise never use. It's, yeah, there's so much respect for Harrison Jones. For, like, I understand the minion line on the play that you yeah, 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 Flame Tongue notches. Like, that makes right. sense. But not playing Doom Hammer this turn, like, that's purely has to be down to respecting Harrison Jones. There's no other reason not to do it. Yeah, right? I mean, to be fair, the Gilbin almost guarantees two damage. Sure. Uh, almost, because obviously Brawls is still a card. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I don't know. I mean, is he just faking not having Doom Hammer and you just want to surprise burst him when he draws Rock Biter? Yeah. I, I just feel like it would be so much damage stacked up over that many turns. I just feel like because this deck doesn't play any card draw, I believe Ancestral Knowledge is one of the cards that's been cut to make room for things. He's going to run out of options very soon, possibly this turn. So, at some point, he's going to have to commit to the Doom Hammer. The longer he waits, the more likely Harrison Jones is to be there. Yep. So look at that. That's uh, he can use Eight. the abuse. That's four damage. He has the Doom Hammer. The issue is from his lines of play. I think he just wants to use the Doom Hammer Garibald. when he has spare mana. And last turn he did not. After the uh, there was a turn where with the Earth Shock, he did not have enough mana. No, he did. Hit. He could he could have done Earth Shock Doom Hammer that turn. And, and but not the Hero Power. So he was trying oh, to squeeze right, right, in right. that extra. Uh, two damage. Okay, that's, fair that's enough. That must be it, I think. I was surprised he actually um, attacked with the Gilbin there. Because he has the abusive He has abusive, hand. and abusive could potentially, do, well, will almost certainly do nothing next turn unless he draws a charge minion, which I think you're going to do four damage the next turn anyway, except you leave two minions on the board, and it's more of a, it's like plus two burst surprise, right? Which um, might help as opposed to just two damage, hope it survives, and two more damage. So that was an interesting play. Because yeah. uh, it wasn't really a brawlable board either. There was like one right. Gilbin. He, he might actually board. end up being too short of lethal. Um, but as long as this hero power is there with that Doom Hammer, we're talking, you know, six damage a turn. Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll nice. do it. That is 10 no. damage right now, yeah. so yeah. yeah, too short, and obviously the, the Abusive Sergeant is getting his two in, so it's yeah, not so like it the was, two was yeah, missed exactly. last turn, so not miss yeah, this, is, this is fine, but as you said, he's, he's kind of fortunate to have drawn a charge minion there, otherwise this Abusive Sergeant would not have got its two damage in. Yeah, so. I mean, there's still, uh, I suppose that there's still Crackles, Lava Burst in the deck. So right. Oh, Death Lord. That's a Death Lord. You're going to have to find some damage from the deck. So we're talking crackles. Crackles, lava, lava burst. burst. We've not seen any of, of the. We've seen a single lightning bolt, I believe. Yeah, he just keeps oh. drawing minions every game. There's so many of them in the deck. It's a very board-based aggro deck. Um, really moving away from the list that we've seen recently with lava shock, ancestral knowledge, etc. Sometimes the elemental destruction. I don't think he liked that. Feral spirit is wow. not what he needs right now, but he can at least start punching through this this death lord. He needs to get it out of the way eventually. Yeah, I think you actually do di just use the just use the charges, right? You just hero power, use the charges, get through it, because it's very likely that there's only one Earthshock in this deck, and we saw it earlier against the Sludge Belcher, so it's not like it's... Well, if I just draw Earthshock, you know, I can go through. So that's... Yeah. Uh, I, I really like this. Just hit do for, uh, hit for six and uh, make it so the Feral Spirits can either trade in this turn or the Next weapon turn. goes in. Yeah, yeah, the, as in if he trades it in, which I doubt it Shield block is huge oh. here for Dog and the Shield Maiden. Okay, that is a wow. ton of health gain. Yeah, I was gonna say there is still a lethal with the, raw, the you know the rock biter since going through the death lord would give you uh, six damage right that you waste and then six more on the face would have won but because of the uh, back to back armor game cards has powder removed his first spells from his deck because it's starting to feel like it <laughs> just goes straight into a girl but it's like please. this is thinning it at least a little bit um, abusive okay Ooh, sergeant not what you want. I mean I see something just Lepanome was probably the best pull out of that, or a charge minion, so there aren't too many great... <laughs> oh, that that oh. BM Harrison Jones. Yeah, I'd be there. long in a museum. Yeah. I mean, this is still a pretty good uh, revenge if he wants to pick it up, just because you uh, get to is, wipe the board. But is you... there any card that actually wins powder this game? I don't believe so. It's, you know, Normally in this situation, oh. you're looking at ancestral knowledge into live card, live card. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why Ancestral Knowledge is so powerful in this deck, that gives you those double out situations. But from there, one card at a time, wasn't gonna be able to put it together. So Dog, with the counter pick, the, the life gain removal based warrior. And 
ties things up one game to and one. Even then, it was so close. So we saw Powder draw Lava Burst as the, the last card. Right. If it was one or two turns ago, it would have made all of the difference. But that's the way it goes. Again, I understand this is incredibly oversimplified, but how much damage was lost from Doomhammer by not equipping it early? He got to use all of the Doomhammer charges. Some of them got walled out by a Death Lord that wouldn't have been there, but it's oversimplified because, of course, instead of playing Doomhammer, he played minions that they then got in damage yeah. of their own. But it's interesting to see that game through. We didn't see Harrison Jones drawn right until the very end. So was brilliant. that was Doomhammer drawn, was free. It was drawn the turn after the yeah. Doomhammer charges had all gone, which was kind of funny. But now we do get to see the deck we really interested in from Powder, which is this uh, SK Druid, uh, yeah. I'm calling it. Um, and it is going to go against Dog's Control Warrior, so it's going to be really interesting as this deck lines up. Um, versus Control Warrior specifically is going to be cool because there are Spectral Knights in this deck, which means like Executes and Shield Slams are going to get very, very awkward. Right. Uh, I, the, one of the things that this deck does well is, is a spin on Aggro Druid that kind of leans towards mid-range. So it's combining the best of both styles. And on the coin with a hand like this one, I think you're going to see that kind of explosive start uh, come into action. Yeah, I was talking to some players in the in the viewing area earlier, and I just like looking at this deck, it just feels like it's like every card that's ever been in mid-range Druid yeah. since the beginning of time is just in this deck somehow. The Spectral Knights, There's the Pilots, Spy yeah, Golems, Druid of the Saber. Like it's a really bizarre list that's been put together, but obviously very successful for Powder in this tournament overall and should continue to be successful over here because just as a Druid against a Control Warrior, you feel pretty happy no matter how your deck is built. Yeah, and even this opening as well. Even the Living Roots are pretty good because Warrior doesn't really have a great way of dealing with... Oh, wait, wants to deal with? There's Revenge, but Revenge on the two one ones. You know, you normally want to get a bit more out of it, but they are going to chip away at the armor. And as we said, this uh, Warrior from Dog is like all about the life game going to the late game, just putting himself out of range of lethal constantly. And even just the one ones early, just cutting down the army is going to be huge. Yeah. Why do you think we're seeing the Acolyte of Pain come out here over the Death Lord? What's the thinking from Dog Put on Put the turn? Panther on one, I guess, if there's a trade that happens. Uh, one of the other ways that you could have played this turn is you drop Death Lord, you hope that the Druid you know, doesn't have a way to kill it. The issue is if he can kill it and something good comes out, without having fetched that Execute from the Acolyte draw, yeah. he won't be able to do and anything. That would have been the scary play if he played Death Lord. I mean, it's definitely not fantastic because you know, he doesn't put the Panther on one, uh, but he does reveal it and do the damage. But if that was just a Death Lord, then he just kills it off with the, uh, the two 1-1s one and the, the face from the Druid and then just gets an additional minion. That Death Slide draw is pretty huge, but I just want to point out that's actually a really great recognition from Powder because I totally agree with Noxious. The reason the Acolyte was played is so to bait the 3-2 attack. Powder saw right through that. You know, he could have just uh, to made the natural attack, coined out a Shredder, for example, yeah. and like that would have seemed Which like a great good. turn. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but he recognized what the purpose of that Acolyte was and played around it with the Savage Roar spectacularly. So. Yeah, and do you think on top of that, he now isn't going to coin out the Spectral Knight? Because if he was expecting a Whirlwind effect, the attack from the Despite would actually finish it off as well with the additional Whirlwind. I mean, Shredder feels okay. Spectral Knight feels similar. The only upside of playing the Spectral Knight in this spot is that you are going to be, I guess, eating up at two of the mana from the Warrior player. Yeah. I and think also, also pushing for damage. Right. Well, you're, like, you're kind of approaching the point whereas if he attacks this, he's at 12, and then suddenly you have Lotheb to jam yeah. down, which you kind of feel like is pretty guaranteed damage a lot of the time. You have a swipe as well. And so keep her to silence Exactly. Yeah, 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 you feel like you're just in beatdown mode right now. So Is he simply going to play the Death Lord and armor up? Be like, you know what? I think it's time I slow down on the uh, phase damage. What's going to be interesting is if he plays the Death Lord, do you, do you guys like like trade swipe to get the additional minion or do you like silence oh there's not going to be any trade it's going to be revenge into death lord uh well he did just oh, pick up the death lord to play it first though and if he's yeah, doing that's, that's that's right. thought, like, be a revenge. It. Yeah, okay go. so no i don't imagine there yeah. would be an attack but... death lord armor up yeah, yeah. yeah. crazy so now do you, do you do you like the swipe i like silence <laughs> yeah <laughs> I just, well, you just keep it, pushing I, why I think, not yeah but i think it's a bit uh, of a tough one because you could keep pushing or you only take two damage on the spectral knight which means it does die to the death spike but you gain another minion as well and do like you know a tiny bit damage as well is it, I, I don't think it's a tough one i think the attack swipe is open to more counterplay say if your opponent has um you know attack into the the spectral knight execute. and then an, an execute for the other minion that comes True. out of the yeah, death lord whereas just jamming through damage it's kind of hard to beat that at this point when you're you're just stacking up you keep the swipe in your hand then as well for extra, extra burst damage, damage. Yeah. yeah that's good what i like about the the whole silence and go face is that you just saw dog 
you know, you assumed he had an AoE, you played around it. Yep. Uh, his game plan changed because he realized, I'm gonna go too low on health. And you just say, well, nice try at preventing it. I'm still pushing through. Now you're stuck with the exact same board. You probably still have to play Revenge, oh, uh, even though it may deal more damage in AoE. What's your play now? And it really is difficult for Dog to handle. And also, it's probably quite interesting that uh, whether Powder thinks because he played Death Lord armor up that he doesn't have Belcher right. either. So doing the, throwing the Silence out was an option because you're like, well, I don't think you've got Slug Belcher, so I don't need this other Silence. Well, it looks like uh, this is actually going to be a bit of an awkward uh, turn for Powder because he's going to be set back a little bit by losing this board. It, is this going to cost Dog mana, though? So he can't go straight into that Shield Maiden to gain the instant armor. He is going to follow up with the Elise. He does play the board, but as you mentioned earlier, so he does have a pretty okay follow up in the form of either Lotheb or a Shredder Hero Power, if he wants to. Yeah. Right, still still Lotheb in hand. Swipe is used, but he, he thinks he can maintain the pressure with that Lotheb for sure. Double Mounted Raptor is not the end of the world here either for generating a sticky yeah. board presence. So that second Mounted Raptor draw probably convinces him just to go for the sticky minions here. Try and use Lotheb to protect a bigger board once he rebuilds. Yeah. And the Revenge is enabled as well, which will give Doggy a bit more clearing potential. Right, yeah, Revenge is looking really juicy here just to be able to take care of these two Raptors, trade into the one drops afterwards. But um, Dog might be considering here whether he needs the long-term investment in Justicar Trueheart already, whether he can afford to make the big initiative play with Dr. Boom to try and take the board. There's a lot of or, different or lines this turn to consider. Or the Shield Maiden, just gain the armor straight right. up. He's on 12 health. Yep. Like, it's really scary. This is tough because like the mana just doesn't quite fit anything that feels comfortable here. Remember, we have seen a Savage Raw be used. We've seen a Swipe be used. So Dog might be considering that there revenge is... Revenge Brawl is kind of playable, right? Yeah, Revenge Brawl is not terrible. That's a big commitment this turn, but it, it kind of gets the job done. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a whole series of viable plays in hand here for Dog. He is going to start with the Revenge. Blood Imp is kind of a big deal here. Well, in terms yeah. Of minion sticking to the board. Savage Roar has found a friend. It is something you're not going to be, be... You're going to be pushing this off unless you brawl it out or find another AoE. Powder will get to use the Lotheb on curve with a hero power to kill at least if he wants. Um, but do you prefer... I was going to say, would you ever prefer playing the Aspirant since you force a trade either way? It's a tough one. I maybe would have weighed up the Aspirant there, actually. Um, purely because it's just another minion. And then if he trades, he probably trades with a weapon, which means you're at least taking some, you know, some more damage to the warrior. Well, this is basically Dog. He's looking at this, he's like, yeah, I can play Shield Maiden. Compensate for the Shredder. Armor up. But I still have two minions on board. I'm nearing turn nine. He might have the combo in hand. Uh, I'm not sure I can do this. Even Drew to the Claw with a Savage Roar would be really threatening. And, and he's probably really upset as well that that Shredder just seems overpowered as a 4 4 now. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it only seems overpowered when it's a 4 4. <laughs> it seems more overpowered. Okay, there you go. Say. And mainly because he had the Fiery War Axe. As yeah, well. exactly. And so, I mean, I guess he could just run the Acolyte in as well if he wants to, you know, uh, make that play because it's not going to get an extra draw any other way this this turn. So definitely something to consider, but maybe he just has to go for the Brawl here. I don't know. This is tough. Well, this is going to be four health gain and some uh, counter play. He's looking at this, you know, I'm on 18 health. I'm probably not dying right now. And he's, yep. you know, right. Uh, for the most part. But Powder, by the way, not playing Lothel last turn, is trying to keep it for the turn where he's going to get to lock down Dog from any possible removal turn. And this might just be such a turn. Uh, yeah, because he's going to be push. still one mana off even doing like a 10 mana brawl. Right. Just saying, well, it's going to cost my whole turn, but brawl actually really helps me out. If he plays Lothel now, it's going to be huge. And I, I think that would probably lean towards the Lothel Aspirant and maybe even put the Shredder into the, uh, into the True Heart. Yeah, I think especially having just drawn Ancient of Law just now, you can kind of afford to play the long game a little bit. So Ancient Ancient of Law and trade the Shredder isn't even the worst idea in the world. But look at this. Um, yeah, the, the hero power coming down here, taking out the 6-1, pushing four more damage to face with the Pirate of Shredder. Darnus Aspirant coming down alongside. So uh, that brawl is um, looking relatively appealing now from Dog's side. And with the investment last turn, as you pointed out, Noxious, he, he established that he wasn't going to die that one turn in most worlds, and he recognized that was his free turn to get that long-term investment in the Justicar True Heart onto yeah. the board. And the bash, really frustrating to see this blood in buff, the two targets that could have died yeah. had they come out of the brawl, you know. Yeah, I think what's interesting, though, is he can, yeah, he can just brawl, but then, say, for example, Bash Rock comes out of the Shredder, sure. which is pretty reasonable as well, as long as the Shredder doesn't survive, of course. Right, that's the theory. So my working theory. 
It's probably one of the best lines of play he's got. I mean, he yeah. still gets armor from Bash either way. He still gets. This is the same job as the War Axe, right? So. Right. Oh I mean, wow! Armor, armor up War Axe is great. <laughs> oh, ho, ho. <laughs> okay. why not? Because why not? All yeah, that, that war. frog from Dog as well. Like, yeah, sure, seems good. Yeah. Axes it down. Still has the mana left over for the armor up because he didn't have to use Bash. So gets his four armor this turn. Still has that armor gain from Bash and Shield Block in his hand now. So he's looking in a reasonable position. But Ancient of Lore is definitely going to help out here for Powder because he was starting to run out of steam. Yeah. Funny enough, though, the Flame Juggler not only removed the Shield Slam from being played right away for one mana. There, there needs to be an armor up prior to it. Um, but it's also a body that Dog may not be willing to, to handle here. Yeah, and this is crazy that this lothep has been in the hand so long. And uh, he had multiple opportunities to play it. Obviously, he chose to do other things. But you just wonder, because we could have seen how many spells that a dog actually had in his hand across the last probably, three turns or so. It really would have done some work just locking out and make his turn really awkward. I'm wondering if Powder's probably almost certainly going to play it next turn now that he's running low on options anyway. Yeah, Keeper of the Grove would do quite a bit of work here, just being able to remove this 3-5 from, uh, from the field. But... It's looking like a turn that plays itself, and you're hoping there's no second brawl, which again, you, you, allude, you know, alluded to that earlier, Sotol, is people should not be playing around the second brawl. Right. It's it's just so statistically unlikely that they're going to draw it, like, so much of the time that it's relevant in both situations yeah. where you play the brawl, but... And also we, after the low fare, but, you know, it's going to be a 10-mana right, brawl, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. 10-mana brawl, you probably retain a minion most of the time, although we saw Dog come out on the, the positive <laughs> side of that last time. So if this Belcher wins again, we might just see Powder flip the table right here and now. So. Shield Slam, though, also very appealing. You do kill the low Theb, you get to armor up and kill a 2-3. So really, there's three minions on board, and uh, you have a Belcher on three health. So Yeah, another line of play there. I think Dog has way too much armor gain in hand, and with the hero power for Powder to go through. Is, is there any way you could actually just kill the 2-3 here and play Boom, knowing your opponent's only on one card? I think so. Dog playable, is, is yeah. furiously scribbling on his pad right now. He might just be calculating Savage Raw damage yeah. just based on what that one card or, could be. So, you know, or Sh Shield Maiden's the even safer, right. safer version of that, of course. But I just think, like, if you kill that off, then there's, there is four minions, but you still get to armor up, which is additional four health. He's going to go for the Shield Slam. Okay. Use the Shield Slam instead just to get rid of the majority of the threats from the, the board. And you know what? Th this deck just la outlasts someone. He does not need to rush Dr. Boom whatsoever. So maybe that was a more adventurous play that wasn't really needed. Right. I, I feel like this is the kind of the... The thing we see a lot is people looking at ways to set up a lethal. But there are times where there is no need to try yeah, to optimize that on the that. off chance. You know that crazy, oh, it's never going to happen, 1%. Uh, and then somehow it does. And you wish you hadn't made that play for a potential lethal. Yeah, so uh, the Savage Rod did come out with a Druid of the Claw draw as well. So you can get to push some more damage and uh, really put some more pressure on Dog. And even that isn't really the best brawl board. We might want to see like... It's an okay one. Okay. It's an okay brawl, but most importantly, it's now the second Savage Roar out of the wind out of the window for Powder. So, Dog will be feeling relatively comfortable as long as he can now keep control of the board state. Then there's not that threat of the big burst combo coming anymore. Well, that's 15 health for him, and there's five on board, so 10 needs to be picked up from him from Powder. There really isn't anything that I can think of off the top of my head that can do this. Whoa. Certainly not yeah. this one. So you yeah. Can just see Powder's face just be like, uh, yeah, uh, okay, uh, that's not right. Yeah, so he's and just going to push face with what he has right now. Face damage is pretty much his only win condition and, at this point. And also, like, Dog is probably 99.9% .9 certain what that draw was, because if it was a force of nature, you would have used it to clear off the Harrison right. and go face. If it was any other card, he would have played it. You know, there's no card you wouldn't have played that right. isn't Innovate there. Yeah, with the two roars out of the way, I don't think there's anything really that scares you too much. Oh, looks like... Uh Dog can decide to play it even safer still, but it's kind of pointless. Yeah, he's still uh, calculating some things here, just making sure he's playing around all the possible outs. This is uh, pretty much a one game from him from this position, so he's making sure he's identifying what his, his potential bad beats are and making sure that he doesn't do something silly that throws the game away here. There's the force of nature, but too late at this point. Already 13 health up for Dog, and as we've mentioned, Powder can't even just hold on to this for the potential Savage yeah. Roar because they've both been used. So. Yeah, and there's the concede as he completely realizes that he, his opponent will continue to just go further out of reach of any kind of lethal he can even get yeah. together. The important turn, I think, was the turn where the uh, shield block was picked up, followed immediately by the shield maiden. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was the turn where he just gained 10 armor in one stroke, and then the, you know Powder realized right away, oh, this is basically setting the clock two turns further than I can even handle. Right, he suddenly powered his way back up to about 22 life or right. something, and it just had to... It's only that big Savage Raw turn with the Druid of the Claw charge that even started threatening all over again, but Dog once again was able to stabilize after that turn. And this new Control Warrior build is showing that it can conquer some previously bad yeah. matchups. And the, do you actually think the chair going into the Death Lord instead of Silence and pushing made much difference. I think it made a pretty because huge Because he would have held on to the swipe face, right? Right, he would have pushed more damage that turn, he would have held on to the swipe for face, and also the, the scenario where there was strong counterplay actually came up, because it was just perfect slam yeah. on the flame juggler and attack, so yeah, right. that was probably a big divergent point in the matchup, but uh, guys, I'm going to take a short nap. You guys can handle this matchup. Let's um, get comfortable. Wake me up when we have a winner. Yeah, I'm a resident. You're the sleeper. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll at least try. <laughs> with this one. Let's do this. <laughs> and uh, at least discuss open hands before we relax too much. And um, Powder having a uh, true heart is actually going to be quite important, just ready to lock in on turn six. And I'd be kind of surprised if anything else but true heart is played on turn six, just because you want to really start stacking this armor as soon as possible. Because we're not going to lie, guys, th this is going to be a long one, more than right. likely. So an interesting thing is the you know most decks nowadays, the Control Warrior list, are trying to go through the to the Elise path. And there's an interesting twist that I saw recently where somebody was playing Toshli in Warrior. Because it's a good tempo card, and there's two extra spare parts in the mirror match will give you two extra legendaries, uh, which incidentally end up making a huge difference. Yeah, so there's a few key points in this matchup, seriously speaking. It is a slow burner to start with, but everything kicks off fairly quickly as you get towards the end. Um, basically, there's a couple of key cards that you want to get as early as possible. Elise, so you can shuffle through to that monkey and have the security of casting it whenever you want. And also, just a card true heart as early as possible to start mashing up that armor game. Um, there's actually also a, a bit of a dispute between high-level warrior players about whether it's correct to draw in this matchup. Yeah. Common Wisdom said for a while you don't draw because the game's going to fatigue, but then some people started experimenting with a strategy that says, no, you draw because then you get to Elise yeah, the quicker. Monkey yeah, and yeah, Justicar yeah. quicker. So there's actually this big discrepancy going on, people trying to perfect this matchup. Be interesting to see which side of the coin these two players come down yeah, on. And we did just see a slam from Powder, so at least he's uh, okay at the moment to cycle. And then also, I actually like Control Warrior Mirrors because the, the resource management is so intense. Every time you see a shield slam, you've got to think, was that the best shield slam I could get? Because if it wasn't, and then your opponent gets a better shield slam later, you start to fall behind. Same with executes. Any form of removal and weapons are the main ones. And talking of weapons, go <laughs> Wow. You know what would be devastating? <laughs> Elise coming out of this one. Oh my god, imagine. This does make the match uh, very uh, Well, Dog doesn't have his Justicar in hand yet, so right. if Justicar was to get pulled out of this Death Lord, that is even more devastating. So two cards could really ruin this. Yep. Elise and Justicar coming out of the deck for Dog could completely shift the dynamic of this Here one. we go. Dog's going to cross his fingers and He's hope. Really? Seems okay with what's just happened based on his reaction. Oh, yeah, oh, all yeah, right. Yeah, yep. Seems I'll good. take it. Seems good. Yeah, I mean, if that eats up uh, an execute from the Death by the AoE, then so be it. It was going to get executed late game anyway, but there isn't even such a thing. Yeah, and also one of the things Silvana, Grom can be used for as well is if you do get to the fatigue matchup, which goes a bit differently because of Elise, you know, na nowadays, yep. but you do normally try and use Grom Burst to actually set up the fatigue kill the turn before, but uh, coming out this early definitely isn't that much of an issue because, as I said, with, with the Elise deck that it, it does change that quite dramatically. Right. Commonly, because your Grom will end up being transformed anyway if you exactly. don't use it, it's usually just like used as a mid-game removal tool or something, yeah. like to finish off a Sludge Belcher or something. They, it, Pretty much everything in your deck is an expendable card, just as long as you keep like the right, a, to a decent total of cards for the end of the game to transform with Elise. Yeah. Well, this is a bit of an awkward hand for Dog, though. Like, we haven't really h highlighted that, but he's got a very anti-aggro hand to start with where you look at Powder's hand, it's basically what you're looking for in a mirror match for Control Warrior, where you've got the big threats, you've got very bulky minions, and you're demanding execute shield slams early. Yeah, and Dog just with uh, no real answer to this Sylvanas right now that we can see, just decides to go face and ignore it, which is always a very dangerous proposition. Lots of counterplay available here to Powder with various combinations of cards. Person but Jones is pretty, pretty good. Yeah, but uh, here's the question. Does Powder want to draw two cards right now? 
You do drop like the uh, like how Wait, close yes, how the weapon is. Wait, yes, this is this is yeah. glorious, right? No, because yeah. he gets his whirlwind off the death spite, and then with Harrison, he gets the whirlwind off his opponent's death spite. Steals the Grom, yeah. the Grom yeah. ten to face. Seems good. Pretty tough to, <laughs> to say no to that, right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, we'll do it. Pretty tough to say no. That'll work. And Doug, a swift nod there, just like, yep, yeah, that just happened. He does get the two card draw, which he's probably, with this trade off, pretty okay with. Right. Gets the Grom for 10 to face, and you know what? Right, all over to Doug for, to try and answer this board. Yeah, because it helps. Because in Powder's position, he already has his Justicar. He's already played his Elise. Yeah, so well, his need to cycle thing, cards yeah. just does isn't really there. But yeah, at the same time, it doesn't really matter like which cards come out of his deck, because his job's already done. His game plan's set up. It's Dog that's the one, but looking at his hand isn't really going anywhere right now. So if either player wanted to draw cards, it would be Dog right now. But SK Powder, that 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 turn was too insane yeah. to yeah. pass up. And, and also, like again, look at Dog's hand, like double revenge. They're they're the, probably the cards you want to turn into legendaries in this in this matchup. And he's been sat on them for a long time already and can make no real use of them yet, which right. is huge when you look at the quality of Powder's hand in response. There was a weird, in, like I guess a weird line of play where you play the Acolyte, you, you whirlwind first, pick up a single card. I mean, revenge first, pick up a card, and then uh, use the BGH on the ground. But it's not really going to be something you want to waste in a matchup where it's all about lasting the opponent out. Yeah, and this Bash is actually pretty nice. He doesn't have to use it. He has other options, of course. He has Gorhal if he wants to get it equipped. But Bash gains him armor and just defends this Harrison so he can just keep chipping away at, for five damage. It's actually, I say chip away. That's actually a good hit every turn. And again, he's just presenting so much more damage. The board isn't really brawlable for, uh, for Dog here. And it looks like these Revengers are finally going to get some play. Yeah, they have to. They absolutely have to. Uh, the fact that you can't play the slow game after you've seen, again, you know, it's just a car and the Elise just compounds this. It's really difficult for Dog. He's looking at this, throwing away removal where his opponent hasn't had to do anything. And again, Harrison's just going to potentially get stuck in for another five here, right? It's just doing its job, threatening damage on Dog every single turn here. How much do you think that execute is worth on the Acolyte? Because I think it is. What one of the reads Powder can make is that that turn was pretty terrible. Yeah. Like, so you, you cannot have good cards in hand or good cards in this situation. You couldn't kill Harrison and the Justicar. So you know what? You probably can't kill it next turn that easily either. And it denies the card draw. So I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't mind an execute here. Yeah, it's super counterintuitive because, you know, if anything, quite often in the Control Warrior mirrors, you're trying to force more card draws from your opponent's acolytes, not less. But <laughs> as, you, as you said, you can get a pretty solid read right now that Dog's hand is pretty appalling and he's <laughs> frantically drawing cards now, trying to get something to do. So yeah. he's putting himself in the position now where he's digging ahead on fatigue as well. So You know, the, the, the point is, the upside, hey. right, is it can't be worse. The cards coming out can't be worse than what you have. So you keep drawing, you're eventually just going to find improvements to your current state. Yeah, it's very true, but he is cycling so many cards here, so he's going to have to find a way to make a proactive win in this game. He's definitely not going to be uh, too far ahead on the fatigue battle, being lower on health and uh, farther, further through his deck on card draw than his opponent. Yeah, and one of the things is even if Dog can get this Elise going and actually go into the monkey to tra you know, trade away all these cards to legendaries, a lot of the legendaries are quite high mana cost, and it might just be too late. Powder might not need his own Elise because his, his hand quality is so high, and he's already pressured Dog quite heavily anyway. And this, this Harrison, man, I mean, it's doing some work. It killed two charges of the Death Spike completely. It's done, what, 15? 15 damage, maybe right. 20. That's about 20 damage overall with the trade, like right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with everything that's happened. One of the things, too, is that this matchup is often won on the back of you know, you play your release after the you play the monkey. That is after the opponent has exhausted removal. Powder hasn't had yeah, to exactly. worry about that, so the removal will still be there even if you end up getting everything. But right now, it's looking like the tempo is slowly but surely shifting uh, in Dog's favor. The board is his. Yes, there's a lot of threats in Powder's hand, but there is no immediate lethal. Uh, he can set up one. You know, play boom, then you maybe try to get the Gorhal out. That you Grom revenge set up a huge burst. Yeah, I wouldn't even mind Gorhal now. I think again, there's actually been a few opportunities for Powder to play Gorhal, and I think again, yes. we're in Harrison Jones respect territory where he's gonna try and get another weapon dealt with by Gorhal, but never mind, he's gonna respect the uh, lease here, chop it out, and if Harrison comes down, at least the weapon has found a good target, whereas previously it was just gonna be kind of used to deal with. Yeah, us, and, and what, what Powder wants to do, I think what both players want to do here is get a minion on board, oh. which is difficult to deal with, and Gorhal gives that the highest chance next turn. 
Wow, that animation freaked out so much. I yes. thought he immediately I threw thought he the goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this was a very weird uh, visual glitch. Right. <laughs> like, hey, I'm a monkey and I'm in your face. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, shield maiden drawn. Not bad to fit the curve here with the armor up, but it does mean exposing it directly to that 6 1 gore house. He's just going to hold back on minions completely for now and just refuse to play anything. And we may have reached one of those awkward stalemates. No powder going to go ahead and take the initiative. And, and this is what he this is what he wanted to accomplish with the gore howl. Right. He kills Elise, and then he just says, "Okay, you have to play something that won't just die to gore howl. And even if you do play something, I can probably deal with it and still play Doctor Boone." Right. So this is this might be the revenge plus uh, execute turn. Uh, there's a possibility that a dog attempts to do this or just attack face, you know, with the death bite. See what the acolyte can get. Possibly uh, take some boombot damage. And he's got to be careful as well because, it, right. as, you, as, you, as you mentioned about the Gore Howl, that's actually, you know, everyone gets very focused on Gore Howl as repetitive minion removal, uh, removal, but six damage to face is still six damage to face with a potential uh, Grom of his own. So if these boom bots hit hard enough, um, you know, this could really be a, a problem over the next turn or so. Yeah, and we do see the Grom Revenge is in hand for Powder yep. as well, so he is able to threaten a lot of burst damage combined with this Gore Howl. But okay, there's the Justicar. So we've seen, as we talked about the key cards at the start of the matchup, Powder has had the Elise played very early. He got Justicar down on turn eight, and Hero Powered immediately. So he's been gaining that tank up, uh, tank up health for a very, very long time. Dog been playing catch up the entire match. Still hasn't really been able to find a foothold in it, but starting to put together those key cards in his hand now. Well, this is a bit of a difficult turn. There's no clear option you want to make here if you're Powder. Uh, there's no, again, chance of lethal. So if anything, you keep drawing for that monkey. It's going to eventually come down to it. But with such a big health advantage, I feel like Powder is in a position where he's not too worried. Dog with the two brawls, though, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like uh, you might be okay with Belcher here. If you play the Shield Maiden, then, it, you know, it's the same as Belcher. You know, the first half, at least, just dies to the Death Spite. But then afterwards, the Shield Maiden provides, you know, a five attack minion that the Death Spite's gone then, so it require another or a different answer. So I quite like this, this play for Powder, if you can follow up with the Shield Maiden to be that one minion that just con consistently chips away at the Warrior. Right, I'd be interested to know exactly how many cards Dog has left in his deck because he's been cycling extremely hard yeah. this matchup. Shield blocks have oh. been cast, he's drawn multiple cards off Acolytes, Slam has, I think, been used. So only five cards remaining versus eight from Powder. So yeah, significant ahead in yeah, I was, I was say, three cards doesn't sound like a lot but it actually is right, right once it's it starts getting to difference. like six turn of fatigue those that three card difference is like 20 damage yeah it's insane <laughs> and this is crazy i mean to, so with the brawls in hand they're probably cards he's not too worried about but with the shield maiden and the true heart you know at what point does this monkey actually come out to play Yeah, I mean, the emphasis is on Dog here to take the initiative. He cannot wait. He's not yet found the time to play Justicar, so Powder is not only stretching out a health lead, he also has the fatigue advantage, and he has the resource advantage in hand and in, in deck total overall. So the emphasis is on Dog to make something happen here. So it, it may just get to the point where he just has to windmill slam the Golden Monkey, but the one thing that he definitely will need to do before that is play the Justicar. Yeah. And it, what, what's, this is where we just, again, go back to the, uh, the resource management as well. Pa Powder can spend one mana and just kill that Dr. Boom. You know, like just straight up shield slam and just get rid of it one mana. What I will say, though, is that this isn't so much about, like, usage of um, mana resource and tempo. It's kind of in this in this matchup, your cards are kind of directly allocated for other stuff. Right. Yeah. And because Brawl is such a bad card, one of the things that Brawl is kind of allocated to is just kill Dr. Boom. Right? Yeah, just that's like true, hope yeah. that one of the boom bots lives. So the execute and the shield slam might be better used for golden monkey situations because yeah. it's going to come down one big threat at a time. I like that thought. I feel like maybe this brawl was, in fact, one of the lines of play you would have considered. The thing is, you're happy to turn that ball into a legendary, maybe. Or yeah, the true. Slam yeah, 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 yeah so true. It's, it's true. Either way, I think this is kind of what Elise does. It gives you two things to do with a card. Play it to get immediate value right. out of it if you can maximize it or turn it into something playable later on. I think one of the things that we haven't mentioned so far is that far left card in the in Dog's hand is the coin. Right. And that is very deliberate. When you have the coin in this Control Warrior mirror, you try your damn hardest not to use it because if you still have it in your hand at the end of the game, that's a free legendary. Exactly, and when, when the matchup is so slow, it's actually quite easy not to use yeah. it. It's ne 
there, there aren't many like games of Control Warrior mirrors where you go, I need to coin this out or I'm dead. Because right. you're so far behind anyway, you know, that legendary from Elise isn't going to change too much. Yeah. Uh, the Soul Dog right now is kind of uh, number one wondering about the Grom Hellscream situation and whether or not he wants to make this Acolyte draw. Because he needs to equalize the fatigue at some point if he hopes to, uh, to, to salvage this. And based on this, I'm tempted to say just... Monkey before release, uh, before True Hearts. Wow. wow! I'm not winning the fatigue race. Let's, let's turn right, everything let's, into Legendary. Malone! Malone! You got Malone! Unbelievable! All right, so no. Malone and Anubarak, those in the con in the control yeah. mirrors, those are the big two that you're really looking for. Dog will be trying very hard not to reveal information right now, but for those of you, just in case you're not familiar, Malone has an effect which, when it dies, it is then put back into your deck. So not only do you then draw a card and not take fatigue damage, but you have a never-ending supply of threats. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it's still not quite uh, hyper-stable, I want to say, right? Because even if you get the Malorn, there's cases where you can let it live, especially when you've got such a high health lead. Um, if you're able to set up, in this case, I was going to say, some kind of burst uh, through Grom Hellscream, quite a bit of... Uh, of a but you know there's no executes. There's no execute. He got another <laughs> just to go! No way! <laughs> what? what? And this is crazy though, the key card here is this would be an amazing Vulgin. play because oh, you know no. there's no removal from <laughs> Dog. But the Dog can just vault in and reduce his health to two and be like, yes. No dragon pretty good, or Ren Black Hand, but Dude, close enough. Vulgin, Idis, Dark Bane, Law Walker Cho is um, actually a pretty sick yeah. turn this yeah. turn. You the want to play the, Execute? Sure. Right, the one problem with after with post-Golden Monkey games is that you don't have any utility cards anymore. Yeah. Your opponent is free to make any play they want, knowing that there's no counterplay left in your deck. So Law Walker Cho is actually a, kind of a useful card to just say, hey, I, I'd quite like some removal, please. Like, do you want to give it to me? Okay. On the flip side of that, Varian is probably not a card we're going to see. Yet. Well, with Malorn, it makes it a little bit less clunky. Right? <laughs> if you play it first, you play it Varian first, and then you play Malorn, not you're like, yeah, please. I'm safe. Not just please. As long as it keeps dying. <laughs> just let it die. There it is. Varian comes down. The Death Spite swing is going to take out there this Grom. And yeah, play. this is sick. <laughs> this is just really sick. Yeah. And now Powder's like, okay, kind of need my own monkey now. <laughs> but he does draw cards, though. So that's that's the way he's going to be able to do this. And he can just kill Law Walker, right? Well, I mean, he can do it. Oh, yeah, that's, go out, wait, right? what about you give your opponent another map to the Golden Monkey? <laughs> but I think your legendaries are too good. Yeah. Roll again. Yeah, you rolled too high on your legendaries. You have to do it again. But yeah, I mean, he, sure, he can chop down the Law Walker Cho here, but that means one of these minions is then protected from the really high value Gorehow, and a right. removal spell is going to have to be used in a situation uh, where it wasn't well, he before. Can, so. Yeah, he can just execute the Vol'jin, still have the 4 attack from the weapon to kill the 3-4. Right, sure, but okay, then the 3-4 gets in 3 damage that it wouldn't have done otherwise, right? So. All right. <laughs> Not too bad. I mean, it's not an awful turn. Dog just had a really good way to protect himself. Yeah, that was insane. From also, though, bear in mind, although it's, it, that turn was really good for Dog, like, Powder is on a, a million health at the moment as well. So he's still in a really strong position, and he can now play his own monkey in. Maybe see what he can roll and see if he can be as, just as crazy as Dog's. What about I don't play that? <laughs> Picks up the Death Lord. Yeah, I mean, there, there's no real rush for Powder right now. He has enough tools in his hand to be able to kind of yeah. survive the wave of legendaries for a little while. And as we mentioned before, like, the emphasis was on Dog to make something crazy happen, and he has made something pretty crazy yeah. happen. So, you know, he's, he's made the right play. He's put himself in a spot where it's possible for him to win this game now. But Powder will still be fairly calm in this situation, I think, being... The, the player with the more flexible hand overall being able to react and still choose when he wants to play that golden monkey when he draws right. it. And still that 5-5, five five, you know, it's, it's not going to die this turn, so it's going to get some work done. Um, how much do you think Dog's wishing there's a, a legendary dragon in, in his deck somewhere, just so Rend can just insta-kill it at one of Powder's Make it those Dormu, I don't care, just make yeah, it Yeah, yeah, just the dragon, yeah, anything. Yeah. And a Ferian would be sick. Oh my god. That's, that's a way to... Give me more cards. What about it? just another release? Why not? Just another release, just start the cycle all over again. Yeah, makes sense. The dog here looks like he's trying to decide between Justicar and Emperor Thorasan. He's gonna go for the Justicar here. Yeah, quite like that. Just to uh, try and protect himself from any kind of beatdown uh, kill here from Powder. Grom is already gone, but there's still weapons in the deck. Bashes. There's still bashes, etc., that can ramp up the damage fairly quickly. So he's just gonna secure his position and then try and rely on these insanely high value cards like Milan to try and get him back into this game. Look at Powder sitting 
almighty on his uh, 60 health. Yep. That's interesting. Was, was there a reason to just actually use Bash there instead? Is he, is he just actually banking Bash for a legendary? No, for damage to the face as well. Like, it's not too far off of getting it done with the amount of weapons he's had. I don't know. I feel like going aggressive here with Powder is definitely an option. Unless Dog somehow has Reno. And I think, honestly, like, he, he doesn't have any real reason to clear the board, yeah. which is why, you know, Bash would have been useful there because the, the Death Lord comes into play. And there is a legendary dragon. But you don't have a legendary to kill. Nope. <laughs> what does that do? Ren's like, aww. Malorn time. But, but it, that's a lot of beatdown coming through if you do go for the Malorn play, so. I mean, but what, what defensive play do you really have? Like, any Upon play us, you make, I, I feel like the beatdown's going to come either way. Yeah. Sylvanas is possibly a better setup for, for swinging, but you still have to get through that wall of Death Lord, so Sylvanas isn't going to do anything immediately. So I think the beatdown happens either way, and you just kind of have to make that Malorn investment as soon as you can. Yeah, Malorn does give you, like, it, number one, it slows down fatigue. You can still armor up on the back of it every single time you play. It kills the Death Lord. If he has to use removal on it, then it's one positive for you. Uh, and you are guaranteed to draw it every single turn, as long as it dies. So, as you said, maybe the investment in it will simply pose a recurring threat to Powder that he has to handle. Right, I mean, you know, one of two things happen here, right? Either the Malorn gets killed and he starts resisting fatigue damage straight away, or the Malorn just gets to chew through the Death Lord yeah. straight away. Right. So. And then still continue hitting for yeah. nine every uh, every turn. Sorry, so it's right, exactly. pretty good. Well, we're looking at uh, seven damage coming dog's way. See the monkey? Yeah. There it is. So it's options time for SK Powder. He will be looking at his hand right now and deciding which of these cards he needs to allocate to various uses before he's able to play that monkey. Every weapon face, then monkey. <laughs> every weapon face, bash face, monkey. Yeah. GG. I mean, with five cards in hand, right? What could Dog possibly have that Powder is afraid of? Well, Malone. <laughs> <laughs> it it is the it. one, but I feel like you can ignore it. And it, as long as right. it doesn't die, you don't kill it. Well, you can still yeah. What's kind of good here is he can actually um, trade into the 5-5, five five, let the Sylvanas steal the Death Lord, then gain an instant legendary on the board, in addition, after playing the monkey. Sure. Which, uh, you know, at least it does draw him one additional card, of course, but it also just slams a legendary onto the board when you know your opponent doesn't have any direct or you're pretty confident your opponent's not having any direct removal. So the legendary showdown, instead of the safe weapon to the face win, uh, with the War of Attrition. Yeah. I could see that. I'd like to trade here, as you said, and then trade. Yeah, because you just like, you play Monkey. And well, you, and what you if play... he gets Monkey? Uh huh. What? Well, monkey's he has in his monkey hand. hand. Yeah, but if you, if you trade, like if you play Monkey and you trade afterwards, no, you no, get a no, legendary. No. So he could have traded yeah, Shell Bane into Sylvanas, and then Death Lord the gets stolen, then he plays he play the monkey. Yeah, and then, and then, then okay. kill the Death Lord, yeah. Gotcha. He's just going for the aggressive stance, which is yeah, I mean, pretty this, good play as well. Yeah, this was <laughs> Noxious's line of play, and it yeah. makes a lot of sense considering the fact that he's going to start taking fatigue damage every turn now, and with all this damage stacked up in his hand with weapons and, and bash on top of the, the board that he has, makes a lot of sense to develop the play this way, and I think this is uh, heading down a pretty inevitable conclusion. Well, in I feel like it's lethal, favorite. right? Uh, yeah. You're looking right. at nine. Exactly. The armor up is not going to save him. Well... The armor up being just a little bit better than Alex Trazin himself at that point. Yep, so he's going to take a long, hard look at his hand. And Malorn, despite being one of the best cards in this situation, and we got super hype about it when it came out, it's you had know, zero effect on There the is overall. a way that Dog ended up playing Malorn last turn mm -hmm. and then killed it with his rend to slow down fatigue. Oh, damn. I wonder if that would have done anything. I didn't really count. Uh, the play's noxious. Anything this would have done. All right. So, Bash. Okay. As long as Dog can't get rid of his own Malorn. Yeah, I mean, he still can make the Rend play, right? To right. slow down for fatigue. But it's uh, not Alex really going to get himself too far. Yeah, he can Alex Straza his own face as yeah. well. But. It, oh, I think it's all it's doing here is just, you know, uh, uh, slowing down the... Uh, or delaying the inevitable yeah. at this point. And this is the issue where like, we, we were on about the, the way the Golden Monkeys come into this matchup, and obviously we saw it on Dog's end, but for Powder, he was just so far ahead already on the hell. That, uh, and just kept his opening hand and the way his resources just continued on through the probably turns like through three to seven, were, um, were just so much better than Dog's. Dog sat with those two revenges in his hand for so long, they couldn't really do anything with Right, and now Dog knows he's probably dead, and he is, in fact, uh, quite dead with his bash. 
I mean, he should know that he's dead, right? Because he what? knows which cards are in yeah. his opponent's deck. He should know that there's a bash there. So he should just be pretty damn sure that he dies to bash this turn. But either way, I think he can accept that there was not a win there. Powder is going to do the decent Let's thing. See what he gets. And let us look that at a few legendaries. A oh. Mookla, a couple Link of Alex Strazas in a Double Alex Straza, Isera, because why not? Yeah, why not? All right, yeah. three damage. That is Fatigue Lethal. Powder squares it up. Two games to two. Exhausting Control Warrior Mirror. And us. <laughs> <laughs> what, what an interesting game, actually, though. It was yeah. a, a lot of fun to actually watch and cast. I mean, I said at the start, it's a slow burner, but then things do yeah, kick yeah, off yeah, very, very definitely. quickly, and that's exactly how the matchup tends to go. But yeah, two games to two now, and we have this fatigue, removal, control warrior, whatever um, adjective modifier you want to apply to it here. It's just... It's a, it's a crazy slow deck with a ton of removal in it, and it's going to have to come up against the Tempo Mage now from Dog. Yeah, I have to wonder, though, because the Duplicate in the Tempo Mage is one of those cards that usually was played in Grinder Mage, which was exceptionally good against the Warriors, since you force them to run out of Shell Flam's Executes. Unfortunately, it's not stacked with a lot of minions that are sticky by themselves. So even though you might get a double Flame Waker or double Sorcerer's Apprentice, there's a few plays where if you're, sl if you're playing slow enough as Dog, you can get the Exodia. Right, right, like the quad source of apprentice. And <laughs> right. I, I've seen him pull it off, like in on stream with a similar deck, because it is one of the ways you win against the deck. Uh, if you don't pick up the tempo early enough, mm -hmm. it might be one of the few avenues you have to pursue. Yeah, and that's one of the issues. That this this isn't uh, sorry, like control warrior of old. This is like heavy removal, and if the second you burn the tempo mage out of cards, they can't really regenerate cards fast enough. Even with duplicate and a geo drakes, it's always going to feel a little bit slow. I feel so. Right. Dog's going to have to have a really quick start, I think, to be able to have a chance to just burn powder down. And looking at his hand, very valuable cards. Uh, the Azure Drake's getting the card draw, the sticky Shredder minion, and even the Conjurer to gain him an additional mage spell, but very, very slow. And this yeah. is just giving Powder more and more turns to actually uh, develop answers to these plays. Right, but having said what you did, Raven, like, ironically, with this hand, the one thing he's not going to yeah, do is run out, out of cards. cards. Yeah. I guess it's an upside. What I like, though, about the Ethereal Conjurer here is that you can set up a really amount, like, decent amount of turns where you get even Echo of Medivh. It sounds ridiculous, but that's sure. one of those cards that will give you even more value against Control Warrior, another duplicate. Um, I, I wonder how Dog's going to play this out. We know he's only running, uh, he was running only the one duplicate. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, what the deck is like, I'm not too sure. The current list today. Yeah, I mean, there are a ton of different ways to build Tempo Mage. Choice of finishes, you can play everything from Ragnaros, Archmage Antonidas, Dr. Boom, Ronin is a fringe inclusion sometimes. Right. And your, your choice of four drops, Shredders and Water Elementals, whether or not you play Arcane Intellect, like there's all these crazy decisions that go into it. Even the selection of one mana spells that you choose to use is really flexible. So Tempo Mage lists are always a bit of a mystery and I think that kind of amplifies their power a bit overall because you're never quite sure yeah. what you want to play around. This is so funny though. <laughs> he just drew. Turn four is on 10 cards. <laughs> Right, but his opening hand was like four, five, 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 and yeah. since then he's one, just one, 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 one. Like, so my opening hand was five cards away. Now yeah, I see yeah, yeah. it. So can we just switch those two halves of my my hand around so I drew them in the other order? Can we just go back in time and change my order here? I'd love it if we saw all in on this mana worm. <laughs> mana worm, mana worm missiles, flame missiles, cannon, missiles. arcane. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this flame cannon is going to do a lot of work as long as there's no other minion coming out. Uh, unfortunately for Dog, he knows that there's a very high possibility that something else comes out with, with the Shredders. I mean, the Belcher, that is, and the Elise being minions that are played in that list. Yep, so out of the Shredder comes a 3-2, which is a decent target for the uh, for the Death Lord. Plays along the, the Sludge Belcher alongside it, which is going to reduce the efficacy of that uh, flame cannon here. So. Liquid dog, liquids dog may just choose to develop a Drake here. Having you have to waste a spell if you do so. So you'll have to be using the arcane blast to deal four damage. Mm. Uh, if you do, yeah, so. he, I don't he think it's worth right? Yeah, I like that better. Uh, well, you may not have to. Or you could play Mana Worm, Sorcerer's Apprentice, and all of the one mana spells. <laughs> <laughs> just a really empty. Yeah. Spell. And, and then pick up uh, right off the bat after the flame cannon. Just get the Archmage, and then everything goes crazy. Worth a shot, right? Yeah, I mean, if uh, if you've gotten something good, it's not half bad. But right now, the board is still dogs and uh, he still powders, and he still has follow-up. Secretion-wise, got removal in hand. 
Yeah, I mean, it's weird when you're coming up against a deck called the Tempo Mage and you've been the deck with yep. Tempo for the entire matchup and they've this just been sat behind playing removal spells. So this Elite Armor up here just cons keeps consolidating the board. He's it's so far ahead right now. Exactly. The, the combination of being able to just keep dropping minions and the Tempo Mage's board is empty and still weaving in armors up is huge, which is why I actually like that play a lot better than just slam Sylvanas. Because if, if Sylvanas eats a fireball, you're still probably pretty happy, but it's just gone then. Whereas, you know, this is you gain the two health and just continue pushing further out of range. And this is like just the craziest hand I've seen from, from I a kinda like this, for though. a long time. I mean, if he waits one more turn to play the coin sorcerers, he gets the extra Frostbolt. So he can go on turn seven, Drake, Sorcerers, Coin, Frostbolt, Arcane, Missiles, Arcane, Missiles, Arcane, Blast, Death Lord and gives do you insane an Arcane and thing. And right, of course. Good, yeah. that's, that's clearly the play. Death or you Lord wait for Archmage. <laughs> or you wait for Archmage and pull it all off on turn. Noxious two. has identified the play. Archmage Antonidas out of Death Lord and Definitely. then go ham with spells on the <laughs> yeah. following turn. Makes perfect. Perfect sense. Easy. Yep, I like it. Yeah, clearly wrong if he doesn't manage that. Yeah. Well, you just you, all, if you need more help, you just go ahead and pick up unstable portal from the conjurer for that archmage. If you select any minion from that death lord that isn't archmage Antonidas, that's just clearly a misplay. Yeah, right? yes. clearly messed up somewhere along the line. Discover an archmage. And this <laughs> <laughs> this, this control warrior is actually putting on a lot of pressure on Dog now. There is a fireball there, but again, it's if just... the archmage comes out of the death lord, <laughs> look at these spells. Oh, oh, but it's please. true though. Even a flame waker, right? You fireball the death lord, yeah, flame waker yeah, yeah. comes out. Yeah. You still have an excellent turn. Right, and honestly, like he drew he drew he drew a shredder. He drew double Drake. He has a conjurer in his. Right. Hand. We see Mana Worm, so it's He's drawn yeah. a lot of minions already. It's kind of just the big bombs and a few other mid range cards. Seen that that left. Yeah, got yet. Right. Feeling exactly. good. Let's do it. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Dog is thinking, well, you I mean, know what? I genuinely think yeah, he's considering it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, he, he's, he oh. has that in mind. Oh, Wait, not bad. Is fine. Yeah. Right, let's go. Let's do it. Time's up. Yep, Sorcerer's Apprentice and go in nice and deep this turn. That is the plan. Nice and deep. I see. Okay. I'm going to pass on this. So Arkin is like... I'm moving swiftly on. Um. <laughs> Let me just run away. So we've got the uh, obvious Arcane like There was the option, of course, of using the Frostbolt. Well, the amount of ping is going out, he though. Want, it doesn't one feel more mana, one more, more one mana spells to play. Why not? Yeah. I mean, this is still a very solid follow-up for Doc, because the Unstable Portal... Uh, gives him, you know, an additional minion. Uh, the Ethereal Conjurer could also give him another way to deal with whatever the warriors got coming. Yeah, Fiery War Axe is a decent pickup. Already had one in hand, but he's gonna play the top deck one just because reasons. Uh, is able to take care of. The oh, it's a death bite. My yeah, bad. I was gonna say, was there actually any reason to play this second arcane missiles to remove the no, armor? You're looking for Archmage. Slam? You're looking for Archmage. Uh, that's yeah, he still wants to keep okay. some resources in hand for his Antonidas. See, so he just did the necessary to get full yeah. control of the board here, and the Death Spite is actually a way relevant draw than the Fiery War And obviously next turn he's going to portal into Archmage, as, as you called, Nox, so uh, yeah. should be fine. I mean, I just want to know whether or not, like, what secrets are in Dog's deck, because if that scientist pulls out Mirror Entity, it's not as good as, say, a duplicate that he can guarantee to get a Source of Apprentice from, let's say, if you get two of them, uh, he finds a good turn, or even a duplicate set up for Archmage. He is going to respect the Sorcerer's Apprentice here, shield slamming it away, potential threat of the, on the following turn of leaving that Sorcerer's Apprentice alive, and there is the Archmage Antonidas, so if he had have left the Sorcerer's Apprentice on the board, Archmage, Frostbolt, and the one-mana spells would all have been castable. Shield, uh, Spellbender looks ridiculous, but it is a shield slam soak. Uh, it will not be sure. able to be targeted by this if he wants to. Yeah, but he is going to go with the more solid Flame Cannon, just taking a card that's generally in the deck anyway. Usually the, the tactic with the Discover stuff, but... Right. Yeah, the Spellbender, definitely when, when you're playing Archmage Antonidas sometime probably quite soon, yeah. protecting it from Shield Slam, Execute, etc. It makes a lot of and, sense. And also the thing is as well, uh, you, you equip a Secret from a Conjurer, can Powder really afford to try and play around Spellbender specifically? Of all things? Like, yeah, that's what you, you just really can't. You, it, yeah, it could be Spellbender because it's just come from a, as a random mage card, but you can't really afford to do that, I don't think. So it right. would be quite and nice you, to see. You, you'd, you'd consider playing around Counter Spell, right? So you might end up casting something like a Shield Block to test for Counter Spell, and then suddenly, like, okay, I'm free to execute this Archmage yeah. Antonidas, and then Spellbender punishes you. It's so much more difficult to play around because there's no spells you really want to. Like, how do you burn, how removal, do you burn right? an, uh, like, uh, an expendable removal spell? Right. You don't. It's the same thing, right? So. Yeah. And one of the things, too, is that if there's a duplicate in that deck uh, for Dog, I mean, we're talking about an Archmage duplication. That is definitely something you can just bury powder under. Yeah, so we'll see what happens here. I think 
Dog will be praying for the duplicate to come out here because then he can make a strong an Arc Mage turn this turn, get a couple of fireballs, and also have that threat of duplicated yeah. Arc Mage on the board. So let's see what what I think trading into the Death Lord is always the first thing that happens. We'll find out what the secret is. Hugely important here. I think he's slamming the Antonine. It's duplicate, so, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, it must be. It must be. But this uh, this Sylvanas is kind of waiting there. It's like, oh, I can probably take this, right? But hopefully we can find out what that secret is as soon as possible because it really is crucial to the development of this game. But Dog is going to consider whether he wants to generate more fireballs here or whether he wants to uh, use one of the two mana spells which might have better utility. He also has the consideration of playing the Sorcerer's Apprentice as well, which of course if it's duplicate is a terrible idea. Right. <laughs> I, I actually am probably personally leaning towards one of the two mana, the two one mana spells. Um, just because the, uh, I don't really feel like the any of the two mana spells actually do too much. Uh, whereas he can like just guarantee like the two fireballs there and then. If this Art Mage does get dealt with in a way that isn't duplicated, you've just instantly cashed in the fireballs. Yeah, so here playing the Map to the Golden Monkey just because he can, there's a chance that maybe, just maybe, this is a counter spell and you've sort of wasted it. Now, one of the things too is that Powder may want to play Sylvanas, but if it's Mirror Entity, it's a bad idea. Um, but on the flip side, if it's, uh, if it's a duplicate, you want to get that Arc Mage for you before it dies. So Dog will be hard-pressed to deal with that Sylvanas. Yeah, he certainly will be. Unfortunately, he doesn't have enough armor in place for the uh, Sylvanas Shield Slam play either, which would have been one of the best ways to beat Duplicate. So Yeah, and what's going to be interesting, if he does drop the Sylvanas, next turn he can True Heart armor up Shield Slam if he holds on to one armor. And if there's only Archmage in play. No Very true. Yeah. Right, you, you do it like there is... But if the, there is an one, only Archmage right. in play, then right. you can just duplicate yeah, something you else, duplicate right? Yeah, the minion, yeah. Well, so I'm guessing we have learned from that without actually getting a chance to take a look at it. That it is in fact yeah. duplicate because it's not counter spell, it's not mirror entity. So problem solved, I believe. It's an actual spell bend. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from, from the deck. <laughs> Let it happen. We never saw it coming. <laughs> I want to see this. As he shield slams his own Sylvana, spell bender comes out. Hmm. Well, I mean, the Frost Bolt can stall Sylvanas technically, right? Because you can't really kill it yourself. But with the amount of spells he's going to play here, it doesn't matter if Archmage is gone. Because all you have to do afterwards is just vomit all these fireballs. Yeah, he can go off so hard this turn right. with, with Sorcerer's Apprentice and all these insane spells in his hand. And Lothab, perhaps, even. Because that way you lock out the potential uh, funky plays where he, you know, steals your, uh, your minions. Right. So three mana fireball to snipe down the Death Lord lets the Archmage Antonidas push to face. Picks up a Mana Worm, not terrible when you're about to cast a million spells. And okay. Arcane Missile is going to come out here as well. He can really go with any number of these spells that he wants here, but... Uh, you actually just want to chain the Fireballs here? I kind of like that, yeah. It, three, it feels three pretty natural. The Sylvanas is kind of interesting, so I guess he's going to just commit to killing the Sylvanas. Hope he doesn't lose his Archmage Antonidas here. Mana Worm's gone. And the Mana Worm is gone, so he just goes ahead and Fireballs it. Oh, did he, did he get oh. it in time? Okay. Uh -huh. He did. I think he still had... He actually, he, he did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right. His, uh, he, he wanted the Frostbolt face to prevent a weapon play. Right. He still it. had more mana to allocate right. to more spells there, but it was a difficult turn to navigate. The important thing is that he got rid of the Sylvanas without losing his Archmage Antonidas, yeah. but there is still that Sorcerer's Apprentice in play. What he may have wanted to do is Arcane Blast or Frostbolt his own Sorcerer's Apprentice yeah. to put him back in the same position of needing to duplicate Archmage Antonidas. But what if you duplicate Apprentices with a Dark Mage in the play? Is it really that bad? But the Archmage is not going to stay in play anymore, right? It's just never going to happen. There's no way. Well, you can always hope, right? I mean, with a hand as small as the one that Powder has and the amount of burn you've got, the low theft, the lockout removal, even this, like, the Silver Moon Guardian, yeah. we didn't comment on it, but that thing is ridiculously tough to is remove. Is this just lethal? Actually. With oh, the, uh... did I just... Wait, what? Oh, no, no, sorry, Next sorry, turn. sorry. Too much mana, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, do we have, like, 27 yeah, mana I, this I, time? I, no, 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 <laughs> I, I, I was looking at the... Um, oh, God. No, 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 I was looking at the apprentices and trying to do two awkward minus one maths on spells. Okay. okay. Uh, minus two maths, sorry. Sure. But I decided to make sure the apprentices didn't cost as much as they did, so it's yeah. fine. Powder yeah, is not looking very problem. strong here. I mean, we're talking about uh, he's got a potential removal, you know, use the Chrome as removal. But he knows there's fireballs in Dog's hand. He doesn't see the frost bolts, but he knows there's apprentices. Uh, he knows everything, basically. 
Um, so Grom comes down, cleans it out, and now we're in really good shape. Well, I let's believe play this now balls. is, in fact, lethal, yeah. right? With a frost bolt, yeah, it is. Sorcerer's Apprentice, Sorcerer's Apprentice. Grom. Three lethal. fireballs can be cast for two mana each. That's ten mana. Zero mana frost bolt is cast for, for zero for three more. That is just lethal, I believe. Right, two over lethal. that last turn, That's though, insane. right? No, he would have needed the ping as well next turn. He wouldn't have had, last turn, he wouldn't have had the mana for it, I believe. Yeah. I, did, I did try and count very quickly. That's what I was looking it. at. He could have yeah. cast all the fireballs and the frost bolt, and then... Yeah, we'll see. I think the more important thing yeah, is that that is an up. insane ending to this game. Actually, lethal from Liquid Dog with a massive pile of spells with a duplicated Sorcerer's Apprentice. What again, again burying people with duplicate. I feel like that card in his deck is what allows him to win his matchups. I mean, Duplicate played a huge part in that matchup. Having the Antonidas, um, the threat of the Antonidas meant that um, Powder was very, very hesitant to remove that Antonidas yep. initially, which allowed the immediate buildup of Fireballs. Then the Duplicate allowing the Sorcerer's Apprentices, which created that huge turn so that, you know, the, basically the Warrior couldn't armor up in between the burn. It all yep. came at one turn. Right. but. Maybe we'll get a chance off stream to look back at the previous turn. Yeah. I, think I think he, he might have one off. Yeah, looking I at, think he, he might have was one off. Thing, I counted so, very quickly, yeah, yeah. but I thought it was more important to make fun of you very, That's very fine. quickly. Uh, that, I, I agree. I agree, <laughs> I I agree with that. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're all in that. But yeah, most importantly, we have our first finalist right now. So Dog is through to the finals. Um, nearly let that series slip away from him, but clutched it out in the end with his Tempo Mage. Unique choice to bring Tempo Mage to this tournament, pretty yep. much. And Intra very, very exciting, interesting deck to watch. It's very rarely boring. Sometimes it does draw really badly and get blown out, but crazy things happen with, with Archmages, Flame Wakers, Unstable Portal. You know, it's not called Casino Mage for nothing, right? Right. It's missing some Spell Slingers nowadays, but who knows? Yeah, I just think the, yeah. the crazy impact of Duplicate not actually going off, but just being equipped right. was huge. It actually was probably maybe more impactful uh, because of gaining that many fireballs from the Outmage Antonidas that he couldn't really just straight up kill because of Duplicate was insane and just a crazy set in general. Yeah. Yep. So we have our first finalist. Dog is through to the grand finals.